Good morning. This is Dr. John Bennett broadcasting from Miami Beach. In the background, home of Neurosurgical TV. We have uh, uh, a webcast today with Manuel Encarnacion, uh, from, originally from the Dominican Republic. Now he's in Russia. And he's going to give uh, a presentation on cistern ostomy in Russia. Welcome, Manuel. It's all yours. Hello, thank you very much, John. Thank you for the opportunity. So today we're gonna to talk about the cystonostomy cases here we made in, in Russian Federation. See the prognosis and the future of this technique here. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen now. Okay, do you see my screen, John? Uh, yes, perfect. Okay. So, um, the first we need to talk about, about before I talk about cystinostomy is the traumatic brain injury. The head injury is uh, among the most serious type of injury, both in terms of fatality and long term of implication for the survivors. The traumatic brain injuries Treatment can be complex and very expensive. After the clinical examination, the head injury is most commonly subdivided in mild, moderate, and severe traumatic brain injury, according to the Glasgow Coma Score. So, the descompressive craniotomy can be, we can say, is one of the first, or maybe the first kind of surgery of the human being. You can see here we have a cranial trepanation of the times 10,000 years before uh, our, our time, before Christ. Uh, also, there were records of trepanation after trauma in the first century by Hippocrates. In 1991, uh, uh, Kosher, and in 1903, Cushing also reported the use of large compressive craniotomy for patients with traumatic brain injury. So, although there is current compilation, uh, a compelling of evidence that this compressive craniotomy produces the ICP and the undersized, this compressive craniotomy is associated with a very poor outcome. Additional uh, high quality studies are need to inform all the aspect of the descompressive craniotomy as applied in the clinical practice for the severe traumatic brain injury. We have two study. One is the uh, rescue ICP trial of descompressive craniotomy for traumatic intracranial hypertension. And the other one is DECRA. DECRA is the compressive craniotomy in patients with severe traumatic brain injury. These two studies, however, the, the result uh, has served as a simple interpretation. The descompressive craniotomy remains controversial despite the publication of these high quality trials. The, in the fourth edition of the trauma in the Brain Trauma Foundation Guidelines of Management of Severe Traumatic Brain Injuries was published in 2000. 17 and the main chapter uh, provide two levels, uh, two A recommendation or subject of the descompressive craniotomy. One of these recommendations say the um, a large frontotemporal parietal descompressive craniotomy of 12 or 2, 12 centimeter or 15 centimeter and in diameter 15 centimeter in all, is over a small uh, frontotemporal uh, craniotomy, this compressive craniotomy is recommended to reduce the mortality and improve the neuro neurological outcome in the patient with traumatic brain injury. So what about here in the Russian Federation? According to the National Institute of Statistics, the number of patients of hospitalized with traumatic brain injury only in Moscow is from 13,000 to 15,000 patients. Mm. 
to 15,000 patients per year. Predominantly, they are male. It's a lot of patients. It's a, it's a huge amount of patients. This statistic is, you can see the year, but this statistic is for five years. Every five years, the National Institute of Statistics take all this uh, data. So in the Russian Federation, the guidelines are the same. We have uh, big, uh, big descompressive craniectomy. And I left this, I left this, all these papers talking about the guideline here. You can see it here, the guideline of the Russian Federation for traumatic uh, brain injury patients. So now we need to talk about the history. We're gonna talk a small topic about the history of the micro neurosurgery. Start in the 16s, okay? Uh, Jackson and Suarez, they published a, a very big famous paper about the microsurgery in small blood vessels. But the first model was developed in, in Bullington by the Sage company. And we have here the first type of microscope for operation room. This microscope, as you can see, have a, a camera here, okay? A Nikon. You can see this is a very good editorial uh, written by Professor Jasabil about the consideration of the history of the microneurosurgery. I leave all the link and all the reference in the end, okay? So as you can see, the implementation of the microsurgery has revolutionized every aspect of the neurosurgery. The vascular neurosurgery, peripheral nerve neurosurgery, spinal surgery, neuro-oncology, pediatric surgery. But what about traumatic brain injury? What about the trauma? Why we still need to make the trauma surgery in the same way as the 110 years ago or 200 years ago? Okay, why? This is one of the issues we need to solve. As you can see here, cystonostomy is nothing new. Uh, there is a lot of papers already talking about the cystonostomy and make a comparison study with cystonostomy with the uh, cystonostomy plus this compressive craniectomy or cystonostomy alone, okay? You can see here, for example, As you can see here, we have implementation of the stenostomy and adjuvant to this compressive craniotomy for the management of traumatic brain injury. And this combination has very good results. Okay, so what is that? What is stenostomy? As I say, it's not new. It's, new. it's not a new technique. All vascular neurosurgeons have uh, um, has been touched with the stenostomy since the beginning. The cystonostomy as a technique uh, can be a, a runner exit from the cerebrospinal fluid, from the ventricular system to the arachnoidal system or to the arachnoidal space, or an entrance corridor to the atmospheric pressure to open in the basal system and equalis the system pressure and the external one, okay? With the aim of relaxing the brain. So, Therefore, there is uh, some classification of the cystonostomy in two big categories. One is the out, uh, outflow corridor or exit corridor. So this is when the cystonostomy uh, provides the drainage from the ventricular CSF and uh, a closed contained compartment. This is excluding, this includes the ventriculo cystenostomy. For example, you know the third ventriculostomy here, this one. Or the cysto cystenostomy. We have here the intentional cyst fenestration, okay, in the arachnoid space. And we have 
later we have the another one we have the inflow corridor this the inflow corridor or entrance entrance corridor is the proper system anostomy this is the the one we wanna we wanna talk about it this system anostomy is when the, the system anostomy acts as a drain with the rational pathway to allow the put out the output of the CSF to relax the brain. The same method is like uh, we use for skull based surgeries or microvascular surgeries. And also, as you can see here, we can categorize it as a plain cystonostomy or unplain cystonostomy. Unplain cystonostomy is uh, uh, intraoperative brain swelling. And plain cystonostomy is when we already know what we're gonna do. We have all the equipment, okay? It's a, um, a plain surgery. So something we need to talk to understand the cystonostomy is the glymphatic system. What is that? So the glymphatic system is a network uh, of vessels with the presence of, of aquaporin for channels. The transport uh, glymphatic use the energy of the arteries pulsate. This glymphatic system uh, has proven to the cerebrospinal fluid from the cistern and not for the ventricles. And not for the ventricles. Those communicate with the parenchyma through the virtual rubbing space, okay? So, after we understand that, we, we, we need to know about the CSF shift edema, or oh, in Spanish, it's a translocation, you can call it translocation edema. This occur because, as we, as we say, with the glymphatic system, when there is an injury, this liquid, this DCSF, move from the subarachnoid space through the virtual rubbing space. You see, virtual rubbing space to the parenchyma, to the brain parenchyma. And then that's the reason sometimes we open, uh, when we have, when we open the, um, the dura, we open the arachnoid. And we say, oh, well, there is no liquor. Where is the CSF? It's become all, all, all the CSF is in the brain already. But when we open, open the system, this CSF going out. This is the reason why sometimes we don't see the CSF. Because this moving from the subarachnoid space, the virtual rubbings, parenchyma, OK? So the question is, when I do the cystonostomy, well, if we have a glass of coma score at admission, always at admission, of uh, five to eight. If we have less than five, mm, no, we don't gonna have a, a good result because cystonostomy is no magic, okay? It's, no, it's not like gonna be the panacea. It's a technique who have proof to uh, make a, a, a better outcome in patient, but if the patient in the beginning, we know it has a very, the patient have very bad outcome, gonna have very bad outcome by the neurological status, and there is nothing we can do. So intraparenchymal hemorrhage with mass effect, subdural hematoma with mass effect, pediatric brain injury with the brain swelling, Epidural hematoma, also with the mass effect, unilateral or uh, multiple contusion with brain swelling, with or without pseudora hematoma. When I don't do it, as I said before, uh, we have a glass of coma score less than five. Or if the patient has a very prolonged severe hypotension preoperatively with the dysfunctional actual injury, ischemic stroke. This is questionable because some studies uh, 
have proven the cystinostomy work in this kind of patient. Okay, this is something we need to make more study and see because as the kind of edema we have here is different because here the edema is, um, we have a cytotoxic edema here. This is by the lack of energy, okay? This is kind of different edema, but we need to make more studies. If we have a patient with polytraumatic trauma, uh, patient, prolonged hypoxia, the same result, age more than 80, hemorrhage, just this is of uh, in era of uh, three. What we're gonna do uh, with the ice in the ICU, in neuro ICU, the patient, the patient should be sedated. The patient has um, there is some studies, and I put you in the in the end on the reference. With the patient which is enough for me, have at least one or two days less. Um, less time sedated in comparison with the patient who, who don't make cystonostomy, okay? So uh, the cystonal drainage management, we're gonna make a cystonal drainage as you can see here, okay? We can put any kind of different uh, drainage here, okay? Uh, height of the level of the tragus, the, dur the duration is can be four to five days. You can see the volume of liquid we're gonna, of the CSF we're gonna accumulate per day. Uh, we can use as the uh, hyperamolar therapy. It's not like a regular protocol, okay? Normal thermia, normal ventilation. So now we're gonna talk about this stenosomy, how we do it before, before make the presentation of some cases. So you can see this uh, is a very beautiful picture of the stenosomy. One of my, my friends, almost as a family, uh, Dr. Peralta of Dominican Republic, already made one cystinostomy there. This picture here, as you can see, very good one. So first, we always need to back to the cadaver, to the anatomy. Uh, because let me show you, okay. We're gonna just talk about the few system we, we need to, Always remember because we it's the um, they are the most uh, common system we're gonna see. Okay. So <clears throat> we we're gonna talk about the chiasmatic system. Okay, about the limits. Why it's important is because. The chiasma is, is our landmark. It's the, fair, the biggest structures we're gonna see after we open the dura and we go deep. Is our, at least is the, the landmark I use. The limits are the lamina terminalis. So you can see here, this is the, the system of the lamina terminalis is here. It's superior leak to the chiasmatic system. The carotid system is laterally and the interpeduncular system is posteriorly. We need to remember the, um, the metal carotid membrane from the lateral wall of the chiasmatic system. Okay, we're gonna see here. You see here, I cannot, sorry, I cannot um, point better here. Uh, okay, yes, you can see here. Okay, this is the metal carotid membrane and form the lateral wall of the chiasmatic system, okay? You can see here, again. Okay. So again, you can see here, you can see very well here, chiasmatic. Here, chiasmatic, you can see here, chiasmatic system here, okay? And here again, lamina terminalis here, you see lamina terminalis. Yeah. The system is not here, but remember this is, this is what we're gonna see. And the, you can see here, this is the our corridor. This is the optical carotid pathway, the corridor we're gonna see. Again, this is the area we're gonna be the chiasmatic system, okay? And again here. 
lamina terminalis here. Remember, we, we, we will came from this side. I mean, from lateral, okay? Okay. And of course, the carotid system. This is very important one. It's bordered by the top of the dura mater of the anterior clinoid. I'm gonna see later if we need or we don't need to drill the anterior clinoid process, okay? So the anterior, uh, the dura mater of the anterior clinoid process and the orbital frontal lobe. Inferiorly is gonna have the cavernostinus. Medially, as we remember, the medially, this system share the wall, okay, share a wall with the chiasmatic system, okay? And laterally is the uncus and limum, limum insulae. You can see here the carotid system here again. It's, you can see this very, very pretty picture. This is, this is the chiasma, all the chiasmatic system, all this carotid system, optical carotid pathway here. Of the uh, oculomotoris nerve here, okay. Again, well, here you see the the chiasma, chiasma here, and you see here all the membranes of the optical carotid uh, system, the optical carotid pathway. Again, optical carotid pathway, you see here. So, also we need to remember the system of Sylvia system here. Sometimes we're gonna open it. Uh, the limits we need to remember is the median will have the limit in Sulai, lateral will have the frontal parietal and the um, temporal overlapping cortex. Anterior, we're gonna have the frontal segment of the insula uh, overlapped by the um, opercular gyrus. Posterior, the gyrus angularis, okay? So, the cystinostomy step by step. First, after we make the discompressive craniectomy, we're gonna drill the spinal ridge until the orbital meningen alter we, we find it. That's gonna give us a lot of space. As you can see here, we enter for here and we drill. Uh, you see, you see me also? Yes, yes. Okay, so we enter here, we made the discompressive uh, craniotomy and we're gonna eat all the lesser wing of the sphenoid. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I, we're not seeing a, we're, you wanna see an image, right? Uh, no, I, I, I am showing, I am showing the synthetic skull here. You, okay, you okay. see me? Because we're, we're seeing cystostomy step by step. We're seeing the text. Ah, ah, you, ah, you, ah you don't see my face. No. no. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'll show you later. So, we're going to make it, we're going to identify the, um, the superior orbital fissure and the orbital meningeal band. We're going to make division, we're going to divide the orbital meningeal band, and we we're gonna mark the lateral edge of the superior orbital fissure. About the anterior uh, clinoid process, well, we can drill it or we cannot depend. Uh, it's gonna depend on how tight is the brain, how how be how how good are our skills. For example, I never drill it the um, the anterior clinoid process. I never drill it. And it's gonna depend. You can do it without drilling or drilling, okay? Then after that, we're gonna elevate the temporal lobe from the superior orbital fissure and we're gonna expose in the anterior clinoid process, okay? Then we're gonna elevate the frontal lobe from the anterior clinoid process 
And as I say, we can remove or we cannot. It's like what happened with the posterior clinic process. The posterior clinic process is gonna depend if it's if you don't have enough space for go to the liliquist membrane, you drill it. And also if you have the skills enough and the material, and if you have the good equipment, yes, you can drill it. So after that, this this that, that was the extra dural part. Okay, now we have we open the dura. We open the dura. We, we have different way to open the dura. In the, in the case I do is a, it's in it's like a shape, a C shape with the base uh, going basal. Okay, and then if we need more space, we open like that. So first we identify the interoptic optic carotid and lateral carotid system. First, the optic nerve. The optic nerve is a structure I use as a landmark to know where I am. Later, the, um, we're gonna approach the liliquist membrane through the optical carotid window. And after that, after we open the liliquist membrane, we're gonna find, looking at us, like, hello, we're gonna find the basilar algae. But if, you can see here. If the, the posterior clinic process is big and don't allow us, then yes, we do it. We drill it and we're gonna open the liliquist member. Later, we place the drainage in the prepontine system. Uh, in, in the case, the drainage I use is a pediatric drainage, okay? Uh, um, Nasal, uh, nasal gastric drainage, okay, very small one, pediatric one. And later we close the dura, we approximate the dura and put gel foam or, or soji cell around, okay? So as you can see here, we drill the lesser wing, we drill all the lesser wing of the sphenoid. At the end, after we open the dura, this is what we see. Optional, we can open the sylvian, okay, or not. Again, as I told you before, we enter from here until here, okay, until the meningeal band. We can, um, yes, I made this part to have more space, but if you want to have more space and if you have the skills enough, yes, you can drill the anterior clinic process. You can see here, and you're gonna have very good position of the, all the, all the elements, intradural elements, okay? So what's that, the liliquist membrane I mentioned? As you can see here, again here in the top, you see here. So the, uh, we can define the liliquist membrane. It's like an incomplete arachnoid formation. It extends from the dorsum of the cella turcica to the mammillary bodies um, in the in, in the diencephalo. It's gonna separate the arachnoid membrane of the chiasmatic system, interpeduncular system, and the prepontine system. It's gonna have two leaf, or two leaf or two two parts. We're gonna divide two parts. One go anterior and superior. This is the diencephalic one, and the other one is the mesencephalic one is going inferior. You can see here, one here and one here, okay? One is encephalic leaf and the other mesencephalic leaf. So you can see here this, because we open the, the encephalic membrane, okay? It's thicker of the, of the other two, um, a leaf. Small, fre frequently, we're gonna have a lot of perforation of this one. Again, you can see here, this is cephalic, mesencephalic, a kiss here. This is, you can see here, this is liliquist membrane. We always need to be careful because after we open the liliquist membrane, what we're gonna find is the basal artery. As if we are not careful enough, 
uh, we can have some problem there. And this is something we don't want to have. So as you can see here, we, we, you see here this very swelling brain of the endoscopic uh, craniectomy. And after the cystinostomy, you can see the, the, um, the drainage here. After the drainage, you can see how the latch is the brain. And then, yes, and then you can put the bone back, the bone flap back. But no, not in all the times it's going to be possible to put the bone back. OK, I'm going to show why not in all the cases. Again, very swelling brain. You can see here is very swelling brain. And after cystinostomy, you can see the drainage. Okay, you can see the drainage here. Okay. So we're gonna present some cases. And after cystinostomy, how how they are. The first patient is a male of forty one years old. The Glasgow Common Score on admission is four. Was four? Yes. Yes, supposed to don't make the cystinostomy because as we say, before five, mm, not gonna have a good outcome. But we want to try to give the patient a chance, okay? Because who we are to don't give the chance to the patient and see. Uh, the patient in the uh, four score was six, was brought by the hospital ambulance, okay? He was fine and conscious in the street. Both pupil, uh, pupils was not reactive. Marshall six and Rotterdam three. We also use some different score because we, we want to compare it. How is the, because okay, we know the relationship of the Glasgow Coma score uh, with the cisternostomy. But what about the four? What about the four? We need to see, we need to make some more study to see how is the behavior of the four score with the cystonostomy. Okay. Uh, you know, remember the full outline of unresponsiveness. And also Marshall of Rotterdam. We, we want to compare weight. For that, we need more, more, more cases to, to compare weight. Marshall and Rotterdam, which one is uh, best the prognosis? or indication to make this cystinostomy, okay? As you can see here, you can see the, the CT of the patient. You can see a big dislocation of the uh, middle line. I, 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 even you can see a face of one of, you can erase one of the ventricles and the, the lateral ventricles. Manuel, you're muted. Could you please unmute Manuel? Manuel, can you hear me okay? Okay, there you go. You un unmute Manuel, unmute. Manuel, we can't hear you. Please unmute. We can't hear anything. Yeah, other people can hear me, right? <laughs> but Manuel can't hear me, I guess. Manuel, can you hear me okay?
Okay, I think he's happily commentating, but. See, I can unmute him from my side, but he's got to unmute himself. Hello, Manuel. Maybe you can send a message for her. Yeah, I sent a message. Uh, let's see, what can I do? I can take over the screen, which is, <laughs> which is not a nice thing to do, but I think that's the only thing I have to do. Yes, send anything. Yeah. Open. Yeah, John. Manuel, I can't. I, okay, I can. Okay, now we can hear you. Okay. Now we can't hear you. Yeah. Okay, Manuel, go ahead. We, we couldn't ah, hear okay, you. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, John. Thank you. You need to screen share again. Okay, okay. You go back uh, to the first surgery. Okay, do you hear me? Yeah. Is that, yes, is, no, that, yes. is, that, is that right? Okay. Oh, okay. So, uh, I'm say. Uh, I was talking about the, the drainage, right? Do you understand me? Uh, do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear it. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, the second patient, 30 years old, as you can see, we have a score at the mission of five, scala uh, uh, four, score of six, Marshall six, and Rotterdam three. Here, the quality of the picture is a little bit much better. As you can see here, uh, so as you, Again, you can see this is not the, the right subsection, you see? You, the subsection is huge. Uh, in, some, in some places, we don't have the, the right equipment, okay? But we open the system here, we open uh, all the system and we put the drainage. We, we, we put the drainage, even we look, because we don't have the microscope. In this patient, again, we use the monitoring as you can see here, you can see here the ICP was a little, little, a little uh, low as it's supposed to be, but a traumatic brain injury with very, very low ICP, as you can see. We, this is the drainage here. So, uh, you can use the ICP monitoring in the ventricular, intraparenchymal, epidural, subdural, subarachnoid. And one study we need to do is about monitoring this patient and with the systenostomy. We can use the intraventricular or we can use subarachnoid or subdural to see, to see how, how fast this ICP is going down. You can use Maybe, maybe we can use the subarachnoid monitoring at the same time we have the drainage there. And we can have the two functions, drainage, the system, and at the same time monitoring. We have the case three, uh, 35 years old patient, uh, Glasgow coma score six, the admission four, eight. Um, the patient was um, brought to the hospital by ambulance and he started falling from the third floor. Right pupil non reactive, midratic, Marshall 3, Rotterdam 3. You can see here the city of the patient. As you can see here, since the beginning, we cannot put back in the bone flap. This is one of the situations when we cannot put it back.
Hello, Manuel, you're on mute again. You need to unmute. Hello, Manuel, you need uh, to unmute. Uh, you need to unmute, yes, Manuel. Yes. Okay, you keep on yes. mute. Okay, 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 okay. I share again. It's because when I put the video, with the sound of the videos look like um, I muted. Okay, do you hear me now? Do you hear me, John? Yes. So, so you can see here the patient, the, the patient on authority, the, the pictures. Uh, this patient uh, went out from the hospital with um, some edema. He cannot open the eye very well, as you can see before by the fracture the patient has in the orbit, okay? The case four is a patient of 30 years old, a female patient, Glasgow Comet Score stitch at admission, four, eight, uh, Marshall four, and the hotel down three. You can see the city of the patient, a um, huge, very, very big uh, uh, middle line shift. Uh, you can, as you can see here, we even, we save the, the cuff because we're gonna put bo the bone back in this patient. You see the, the hematoma and in the end you see the drainage we, call, we, we put it. You hear me, John? Yes, now we do. Uh, you hear me? Okay, okay. Let me share my screen again, sorry. Okay. Okay. The case number five is um, a, a male of 66 years old, the Glasgow Commerce Four at the mission five, uh, four, uh, four. Uh, both pupils not reactive, uh, Marshall four and Rotterdam three. You can see here. In this case, yes, microscope. And you can see it's very different when, when we use a microscope. You have a lot, a lot of uh, advantage. You can see, open the Lilyquist membrane. And when you open the Lilyquist membrane here, what you're going to find? Yes, the basilar. Okay, it's like surprise. This is the basilar. We need to be very careful here. And then in that space, we put the drainage. Okay. So uh, sometimes we have a very angry brain. Uh, for example, in this case, we use. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take the time to to promotionate. <laughs> uh, this is one instrument I developed. This is the instrument from uh, make hemostasis of the of the skull and the same time make retraction. Uh, I call it hemostatic retractive forcep. Uh oh, <laughs> there goes the audio again. Uh, okay, I'm sorry about this. Oh, um, oh, Manuel, we keep we keep losing the audio. Yes, yes, yes. How, yes. how, how can we stop? I, it's because when I put the video, I don't know why I I get mute. Okay, I don't know why either. Okay, try it again. Yes. Okay. Hello, Manuel, we can't hear you. Manuel, no puede oírte. Well, problems like this happen. OK, 
Okay, we just got to adjust to whatever's happening, just like in neurosurgery. Manuel, we we keep Again. we keep losing your you audio. Now? Yeah, now we can. But What's now up? I don't hear you. You don't hear me. Wow. Can anybody else hear me? Mauricio, can you Wait. hear me? Yes, we hear you. Oh, okay. Professor Bennett, we hear you. Yes, thank Manuel, you. Manuel, we can now? hear you, Dr. Bennett. Okay, great. It's because no, I don't hear you now, John. Now we can hear you, yeah. Can yes, you we can hear can you. Can you hear me? Can you hear can me, hear Manuel? You. Yes, can we can hear you. Okay, Manuel, can you hear me? Manuel? I don't hear you, John. Oh, okay. Well, everyone else can hear me. It, uh, yes, I can. Yeah, yes, I can hear you as well. Yeah, everyone else can hear you. I hear you, Professor Bennett. Okay. Can, can you can you, you can you play with your hearing your audio? Turn it on and off your audio. Okay, I'll text you that. Man. I don't hear you. I okay. hear you, Bennett. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Manuel. John, I don't hear you. Do you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. But I don't hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, can you, uh, you need to uh, play with the audio. Uh, you can't hear me, so I'll, I'll text Can you it. talk now, John? I can hear you now. This is strange. I don't know. I don't hear you. Okay, let's just play with it. We'll get it. We'll get it. Yeah, let's see here. Uh, Dr. Manuel, do you hear me? Do you hear me? Yes, yes. Now yes. we can hear you. Can you yeah, hear me? I go yes, we can hear you. I'm gonna leave and I'm gonna turn again, okay? Okay, okay, good. Ah, no, I hear you, I hear you. Now I hear you, now I hear you. Okay. My, sorry, my bad, I don't know. Some technical issues. Okay. You want a screen share? Yes, it is. Okay, I was showing in one video. I afraid to show you again because yeah, I don't want to have this kind of issue again. Yeah, yeah. Don't use the video. Don't use the video. Okay, I'm gonna use the video. Yeah, so just... uh, you can see here. This is the corridor we're gonna see in the system. Also, this is the main corridor of the principal one because we're gonna have we're gonna have. The optic nerve, as I say, the, and the chiasma is, is going to be the landmark. Chiasmatic system, we open here, interoptic pathway, interoptic pathway. Then we go to carotid system. We open here the optical carotid here pathway, liliquous membrane, and then we're going to have the basilar. As I show you in the last uh, picture with the microscope. Also, we can open here, yes, we can open here, carotid here, and the more lateral and superior, we can open the sylvian the, the system, okay? Hello, do you hear me? Yes, yes, we ah, hear okay, you. Okay. So, the limitation, uh, we have a hard area uh, from the cystinostomy sometimes. It's, we have a brain, a very big brain edema, very angry brain. We have a burst lobe. Also, the le learning curve. The learning curve of cystinostomy is, of course, is higher than uh, the scomposite craniotomy. It's, it's obviously. Uh, the prolongated surgical times can be 15, maximum 20 minutes. When we have the experience, you can miss it in 10 minutes. Yes, in 10 minutes. Because you, you, and of course, if the brain is not very, very swelling, in 15 minutes, you can make maximum, you can make the cystinostomy. It's open, open the system and put the drainage, 15 minutes. Technologies and the equipment, yes. This is a uh, this is a reality because not in all the places we have the microscope uh, and also not in all the places maybe we're gonna have 
the the surgical uh, the surgical equipment the the rotten set the micro instruments so the question can brain trauma benefit from the microsurgery there is uh, articles for example this article by professor franco sarbede and the scholars samil uh, rames kirolos that it can uh, peter hutchinson who say rigorous evaluation is necessary as all new technique of course new evalu evaluation need to is necessary we need to more more systemostomy to see because it's a prom it's a promise the technique promise a lot because the result the the decrease of edema you don't need to wait 10 minutes one day two days to see it you see after you open the system you see it is a fat you see there and the time and the and there is when the magic happened no magic but the physiology happened as i said before after you open this pathway and all the uh, systems going out you can see in front of you you can see how how the brain relax the brain relax um this is why the technique is is uh, prom promised a lot and can be changed the and can change how we make the, 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 the trauma surgery since hundreds of years ago. So the quality of the evidence, um, most publicly systemostomy studies are uh, observational, retrospective, and non randomized. This is something we need to do. We need to do some prospective studies and randomized. Okay? And a lot of them just run in a single center. For example, uh, the cases we made here was in Podol's hospital, uh, used in a hospital also, in two different hospitals here in, in Moscow. Uh, or this um, patient, and this, this is truly have a small uh, sample, a small qu quantity of patients. So, for this minish, this quality of evidence is generated and preclude the inclusion in the traumatic brain injury meta-analysis and guidelines. Okay, so the future systemostomy must be robust ideally. They must randomize multi-center study. This is something I, I, I try to do, uh, a multi-center trial, randomize about systemostomy. And here I put you some studies about cystinostomy. Uh, as you can see here, the first one is cystinostomy, replacing the age of discompressing uh, hemicraniectomy. Uh, the level of evidence you can see is three, three, four, and three. The, you can see the amount of patient is uh, 468, 70, uh, 77, 50, 18. So we need more patient because the studies um you know we need a randomized trials okay randomized trial um in different centers because we have retrospective the majority of them they are retrospective okay uh, maximum with a double center the conclusion uh so the system also makes a new technique for the treatment of traumatic brain injury uh, and decrease in the act in, in, in front of you in the surgery, the, uh, the swelling of the brain. So the, this is the systemostomy is addressed or following follow from more rigorous uh, studies. It's a systemostomy is a fair price to pay to alleviate the current economic and social um, burden of traumatic brain injuries in developing nations when the rehabilitation is very, very expensive. The right equipment is rigorous necessary because we, we, if we don't have the microscope, it's not so easy to make this into nostomy, okay? And we can have some complication. We need the micro instrument also for making the cystinostomy, right equipment. So combine the cystinostomy with the uh, this compressed economy has been shown to have very favorable effect on mortality and the duration of the ventilar, uh, ventilation in the patient, in the ICU state. 
So uh, special thank and uh, special thanks to to Anton from the Podols Hospital and also to to Nikita, very good friend of mine, who uh, we made systemostomy together and to have very good results there. Also to Professor Cheria because I I learned the technique with him when I was uh, in India. And here, this is the reference I, I left you from some of the um, studies I present here. Yes, John? Okay, very good, Manuel. Thank you for your efforts. Uh, let's start off with a question from Dr. Deepak from the Ukraine. Uh, he says, very nice presentation, especially the anatomy part. My question is that, how good or how is the outcome of the use of cisternostomy in TBI patients? Isn't it better to close sooner after removal of hematoma rather than opening cisterns? Or is there any clinical trial comparing the outcome? So, sorry, repeat me. Okay. Repeat me the beginning. Okay, I'll start at the beginning. Okay, mm -hmm. my, okay uh, my question is, how good or how is the outcome of the use of cisternostomy in a TBI patient? Isn't it better to close sooner after removal of the hematoma rather than opening cisterns? That's a pretty big question. Did you get that? Okay, okay, I'm ready. Um, Can you see it? It's written in the chat. Yeah, yes, I'm checking. It's better to, to close sooner after removal. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Yes, I yeah. hear you. I hear you. Yeah, I think his question is about not to do cisternostomy, but the answer that uh, cisternostomy should be done because the brain edema will not subside after removal of the subdural hematoma. Ah, he's asking me. Uh, uh, okay, okay, now I understand. If we make the cisternostomy before removing the hematoma or after? No, he means that there is no need for cisternostomy, as I understand. In case of collecting hematoma or surgically treatable hematoma, I guess. Repeat me? It's because I don't catch a question. Okay. Well, the question is written in the chat. Can you see it, uh, Manuel? Y yes, I, I see it, but because, okay, he say it's better to, clo to close sooner after removing hematoma rather than open system. Yeah. Okay, Deepak, can you say, can you, can you tell us, sooner. Deepak, are you there? Can you uh, enlighten us on the question? or expand on what you uh, are asking some i don't know if he can talk okay uh, yes I, he, he can make the question directly it's gonna be good if he can make the question directly yeah uh, but some people don't like to talk <laughs> use the audio okay we'll go on to any other question uh, we'll, hopefully we'll come back dr deepak we're not ignoring you Okay, does okay, that... I have a question for... Go ahead, for Farah. Go ahead, yes, Farah. Yes. Thank you, Farah. Can, can this cisternostomy and TBI be done with the endoscope and a trial? Well, uh, uh, I, I don't know. It can be possible. I, uh, I never see it. I never see it. And can be good. If it can be done. This is totally like this. It's going to be very good. It's going to be very good. But for that, you know, cystinostomy is new technique. Um, we need to promote the cystinostomy and, and see if people can have this kind of idea and see what happens. Mm -hmm. But if you can do it, if you can try, it's going to be awesome. Okay. Can it be, uh, can we use a way or a pathway through interhemispheric uh, fissure? Uh, but to open, because if you go to interhemispheric, but what you, in which system you want to get there? You will go directly to the Lilliquist membrane. 
Well, um, it's possible, yes. But for example, what and the hematoma and the trauma thing? How are you going to open it? The hematoma, you can remove it by a bear hole. Um, but if you have a subdural, big subdural hematoma, for example, uh, more than the, uh, 12 or 15 centimeters, let's say, uh, it, it, I, I cannot remove by the bear hole. You can? You can and, use one, uh, one or two bear holes and uh, suction it. Well, uh, I, I'm gonna be glad if, if you can do it and, uh, and show, which can be something very promising, very promising. It can be something very good. But yes, if you can open uh, lamina terminalis, um, and you can open lamina terminalis and then go laterally and go, uh, open the, um, the optic uh, chiasmatic system, the chiasmatic system, and put the drainage interoptic in the interoptic pathway can be good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's to you. Okay, more comments, questions from anybody? Feel free. We've got the time. Yes, I have a question. Is uh, okay. Okay. Um, yes, my question is: after removing hematoma, is better to open sister? Yes. 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 After you remove after you remove the hematoma, then you open the sisters. Okay. Is the question of of that of uh, Doctor Deepak? Yeah. Yes, Great. Deepak. Doctor Deepak. Yes. Great. From the Ukraine. I'm not a neurosurgeon, Manuel, but is, is it cystinoscopy just starting to be used in Russia? Yes. Uh, well, we are the first. We are the first uh, who made the cystinoscopy here. Um, for for that, we need to promote the cystinoscopy. Um, Can you tell me wh where, where it was in Russia in uh, Burdenko? I was in Burdenko, but as you know, Burdenko don't make uh, trauma. I was in Burdenko with Professor Konovalov in 2019, uh, but I was in a spinal in a spinal surgery with him. But mm -hmm. as you know, Bur uh, Burdenko don't make trauma, like like you know they don't receive uh, scorapa Oh, okay. Wow, such a big center, no trauma. Wow. They attend some patient after trauma, but not uh, primarily the who, trauma. Yeah, the one who has said trauma, the big one center of trauma is the exclusive foster care. It's uh, for a trauma uh, institute. Uh, yes, yes, yes. It's a very good one. After um, maybe one day, I, for that, we need to talk with uh, Professor Krilov or Professor Green. To, to talk about sister anostomy and try to implement there because this, this center received more than three patients, four patients per day. Uh, in I, work, I work in Palenovo. Mm, I, I don't know which center is this. Palenovo in uh, St. Petersburg. Ah, okay, okay. Well, um, you can join to us and make some sister anostomy cases and see the result. And we can make a, a big study here. Oh, that was uh, 22 years ago. Ah, 22 <laughs> years ago. I finished there, yes. Ah, OK, OK, OK. And now you are where? I am in Jordan. Oh, OK, OK, good, good. With yeah. Dr. Sabaya. Yeah, he's uh, next to me. Oh, OK. OK. Yeah, he has a webcast every second Wednesday, as you probably uh, know. Uh, uh, yes, I have another question. Um, yes, the question is, if the result of the cystinosomy was some trauma? Um, the question is, this is better to open, is a direct question, is it better to to close the... Um, Actually, we cannot but, see the questions here. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Daniel, can you make the open question, please? It's from uh, Daniel Encarnacion. If you can make the, the, the open question. Mm. 
We have the same last name, John, but we have no well, family. Well, hey, you know, Manuel, I have another, I, you know, I'm not a neurosurgeon, but, but yes. uh, is, is in order for a neurosurgeon to do a, an operation like cystinostomy, it has to be approved by the staff because it hasn't been done at that hospital. Is that how it's done? Uh, yes. Well, it's because it's something new. It's something relatively new. Right. Um, and of course, um, the, the head of the department, for example, uh, need to be involved on what is that. Uh, because, for example, some people say, ah, the problem of the cystinostomy is the learning curve. Because the, in some places, the emergency patient, the trauma patient, they can in the night, and in the night, there are the, some residents, and the right. residents are the ones who made the, the cases. Right. But something we need to, because if people say, uh, yes, the vascular surgeon of the skull based surgeon, can now go in the night, in the one, two, or three in the uh, a.m. in the night for mesis and nostomy cases. We know we are talking about some lack of empathy. Uh, if the doctors say, "I know, I, I don't go there because it's too late," right? Because if if the system nostomy at least can give a little, a little better outcome, is some chance we need to catch. The, what price is we gonna pay? Yes, to use the microscope. Um, maybe 15 minutes more of surgery, uh, learn a new technique. But if the patient has a little, even one point of Glasgow better of, uh, of outcome, yes, I think we can do it. We need to do it. If that can improve the patient at least a little bit, yes. We need to catch that 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 chance. Okay, more comments or questions? Don't be afraid to ask anything. Have you learned any Russian? Sorry. Have yes. you learned Russian language? Yes, 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 yes. I even married here. Oh, to, to a Russian, <laughs> Russian, Russian girl, right? Yes, yes, my, my wife, she, she's Russian. Yeah, we have a few Latinos here, uh, uh, Manuel. Okay, хорошо. Хорошо. Titi me malako. Yes, he's me. My brother, my brother learned the Russian. Uh, he used to speak it all the time at the dinner table. Yeah. Is, Russian is hard. It's very hard. It's very hard language. Very hard. Yeah, different different alphabet, huh? Like Chinese. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, any more comments or questions? Okay, we have. Uh, we'll meet the. We'll meet a few uh, Latins after the webcast. But uh, well, for example, um, Nikita, Nikita from Podol, he's left, he's here, Nikita. Uh, for example, hello, he, Manu. He may... yes, Nikita, how are you? Uh, if you have any comment about sister nostomy and the outcome we have, yeah, our patient is getting better. He was, uh, uh, wait after sedation and uh, wake up the drainage from the system was removed yesterday uh, on uh, control city we had very good results yes nikita thank you so much nikita uh nikita is my friend with the one uh, i perform system nostomy for those nikita for example made his uh, first system nostomy uh, was two days ago, right, Nikita? I'm on duty now. Yeah, yeah, it is. I, I, I say uh, you made you you first stenostomy uh, two days ago. Yeah, yeah. Last Saturday. Oh wow! Yes, yeah. this is, that, this... that was made by my hands. Oh wow! This is exciting. Medicine all, uh, happening now. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> And Manuel, great thanks. 
no, 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 to you. a good corner to be in your presentation. Thank, thank, thank for you, your my help. friend. Thank you. Always. Thanks to you. Thanks to you. Thanks to you. If some cases will be happened here. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, thank you, thank you. well, 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 Nikita, you you can do a, a webcast in Russian if you want, if you yes, want, if you, yeah, if you want to present in Russian, we can do that. Uh, we can arrange it if you want. Okay, just think about it. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's very interesting. Okay. Yes, 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 John. That's a good idea. We can uh, we can present the Nikita's cases of cystinostomy in Russia, and that way we can promote more and more people can be more, more interesting. Maybe it's this the right time to say, uh, starting Monday we're going to have webcast with Dr. Borba and Dr. Sufianov of Tayuman. Uh, so we're going to start to have regular webcasts from Tayuman with Dr. Sufianov. Tayuman. Uh, yeah, Tayuman. How do you pronounce it? Tayuman. Yes, uh, Dr. Mansur Ali. No, Dr. Sufianov. Uh, Sufianov. I, 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 yes, 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 yes. Yeah, well, so Monday we start the webcast from there. Oh, really? Uh, yes. Yes, Monday. Uh, probably probably about the uh, four o'clock in the afternoon, it'll see in Russia it will be three or four. But just watch on neurosurgical TV. Uh, you'll see the, the announcement. Uh, I'm, but I'm Dr. Borba is getting involved from Brazil uh, with Russia. So yes, 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 yes. Bolba came many, many, many times here. I met him uh, several times during two months. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. I met him in 2019, uh, 2019, and no, 2018 and 2019 here. Yeah, I, I lo love broadcasting him. During one of the webinars, he kept waking up the residents. The residents were falling asleep, so he he kept stopping his presentation, saying, "Wake up!" <laughs> it was it was funny. It was funny because I can relate. Being a resident, of course, you sit down, you have a cup of coffee, you're tired. Naturally, you're gonna doze off once in a while. <laughs> Okay, Dr. Monser, you have a comment or question? Your your hand is raised there. Can you hear me, Monser? Or you can you can just uh, type it in the uh, chat because I see you have your hand up. So, what what is your schedule, Manuel? Are you gonna you're going to uh, stay in Russia? Are you going back to Dominican Republic or what are you going to do? I go to Dominican Republic. Uh, I go to my wife, my daughter to, to Dominicana because um, I think in Latin America I can in, in my country I can be more useful. Okay. And I have some I have some ideas and I think I can give to, to, to my country. I can be, be something good. Okay. You, what year residency are you now? Uh, I am in the end of the third year. Oh, okay. So you have, after you finish, how much longer to finish? Uh, two years more. Oh, okay. No, one okay. year and a half more because I, I, I next next month, I'm going to be in the fourth year. So let's say one year and a half more. Okay, because we have a few... Uh... We have a few Latins here now. I'd like to introduce you to Mauricio. Hello, Mauricio. Mauricio is from Paraguay, uh, and he's part of the group that's helping promote our webinars. Uh, Mauricio, I think uh, Manuel is going to do a presentation about a few things. He could do one about cisternostomy and also about the uh, prototype of the brain that he's making. Uh, and you can describe that to Mauricio uh, uh, Manuel, if you yes, want. Yes, of course, uh, of course. Um, 
I I gonna leave my 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 email here. I can um to Mauricio. I can explain you what about the the brain models I am making for the training. Vascular brain models, uh, third ventricle models with ventricles, or maybe a third ventriculostomy. Uh, and the vascular one you can make by pasta. You can make also aneurysm clipping. Also, you can have model with tumors to remove the tumor. Very good. Well, I'm glad Mauricio could see a Latin in Russia. Uh, you know, yeah, in neurosurgery, you have to travel for education. You know, That's it's true. good. You have to travel. Uh, and Mauricio, you may be leaving Paraguay someday and going to Japan, Russia, China. I mean, when you train, I, I'm very impressed with the neurosurgeons, the big ones. They've traveled. They've been, they've done fellowships in Canada and in England and, you know, they travel anywhere they can go to get a good education. Uh, Mansur, I see you're on. Do you have your comment or question? Go ahead. You have to unmute, Mansur. Unmute your microphone. Unmute, Manu, uh, Mansur. I can see you talking, but you... Yes, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Everybody, sir. Yeah, okay. Thank you very thank you very much for arrange organizing a wonderful session. I have a few questions, sir. Yes, yes, please. Go ahead. Number one, sir. All the four patients, they I think uh, the Glasgow comma scale was more or less reasonable five or fifteen, sir. Except few. Some one of the patients who he had six by fifteen. Uh, six mm -hmm. or fifteen and other most sir i want to know sir okay we're having some audio challenges yes can you uh, that's okay what? this this technology Internet. sometimes has problems can you text the question, Mansur? We couldn't hear it. You, or you want to try to ask again? Go ahead, ask it again, Mansur. Hello? Hello? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, try again, try again. Yeah, just having a little difficulty with audio. Because when you do I, audio, I, audio and video at the same time, it really demands <laughs> bandwidth. So I think Monsoor is going to have to text the question. Hello. Hello. Yes, I hear you. Okay. I, I hear you, doctor. Go ahead. Try again. Yeah, Try again. Yeah, yeah. Sir, sir, the question is, sir, all these patients underwent cisternostomy. Yes. I, I, I wanted to know how this procedure or this surgical approach is superior to decompressive hemicranectomy which is superior and why, sir? Well, as you know, um, the this compression and the compression craniectomy just open and give space to the brain to relax. Just give space to the brain to relax. If the brain swelling a lot, you, the brain go even go can go and have even cerebral fungus. All the brains can go out outside in the margin of the craniectomy. So the the uh, descompressive craniectomy just gives a space. Just give a space to the brain, like do whatever you want. But the cystonostomy, what it do is attack microscopically the 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 reason why the brain is swelling. Because when you make the cystonostomy, what you avoid is that swelling go out because you take all the all the all the CSF because the brain is swelling. One of the reasons is all the liquid, all this, all the CSF go in in the parenchyma. But when you open the system, you avoid this swelling of the brain. So, and when you combine both of them together, the student's result proof is mo uh, have much much better result. But if you made the cystonostomy 
Now you avoid the swelling. You put the catheter, the catheter, and then you can put the bone back, and you can have also good results. Okay, sir. Second question, sir. How many patients developed SIADH after surgery, sir? Well, uh, no one of the patients. But the first, the, the, the first reason is because our universe is only nine patients. The, the, the first reason is we only have nine patients and where we perform cystonostomy. For see that we have, we need to have more patients. So I mean to say, sir, none of patients who underwent uh, cystonostomy, hello? Yes, yes, I hear you. None, I hear you. Of, none of them developed SIADH after uh, surgery. No, no, no one of them. No one of them. One of the okay, reason. Sir. One of the reason I, I I cannot tell you like is because the system lost to me. No, I to be honest, I cannot tell you that. The main reason is we have only nine patients. We don't have enough universe to see. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, one more thing is, sir. Uh, 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 one more last question. Usually, in the initial management of traumatic brain injury, in order to reduce the cerebral edema, mm -hmm. which drugs which drugs we use commonly? Mannitol, glycerol, glycerol, all glycerol and steroids. What do you use? Well, for example, here. Because here, for uh, we, they use usually manitol. We use manitol, and in, yes, in only in only one case we use hypertonic solution. But usually here in the Russian Federation is manitol. Manitol. We, yes. we we do not we do not use glycerol. No, we do no, not no, no, use no. no glycerol. What about steroids, sir? What about Sorry? steroids? Steroids. Corticosteroid, prednisolone, dexamethasone. Uh, How? Uh, uh, no, 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 no. We don't use it in any case. In any case. In any case. We, we, we don't use, use it. No, 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 no. No, in any case. Okay. One more question, sir. All these patients, after going cystonostomy, do we give them anticonvulsants? Which anticonvulsants we prefer? How long? Should we give? Sorry, sorry, repeat me. All these patients, after going through the cystonostomy, mm -hmm. do we put them on anticonvulsants? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. To all the patients, for uh, like for low here, to mm -hmm. all traumatic brain patients, uh, anticonvulsants. Yes. For example, uh, the, the patient they take the, the usual, the normal management as a traumatic brain injury. They take the usual management. The only change is in the surgery time, is about the cystonostomy. And after that, uh, the patient can be less time in the, in the ICU. But for that, we need more patient. But the management of the patient with uh, cystonostomy is the same as the as you gotta make from uh, this compression craniectomy. The same. Hello. Okay. Hello. Yeah, we can. Yes. Yes. Just a last question, sir. What? Just a, what, no, one man, question. No, Monsieur. Monsieur, you can last ask one. ask as many questions as you want. No, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Last question, sir. All these patients who undergo cystonostomy, which anticonvulsants we use? Do we use diaph uh, uh, diaphenyl hydantoin? Do we use Levis piracetam uh, or some other, sir? Uh, how long well, should we do? Well, for example, uh, if we have a, a big patient with the, um, in the one a big traumatic, we can use barbituric, for example. We can use uh, barbituric usually in, in some patient here. Phenyl barbitone. 
yes, usually. Penal barbitone. What about valproic? We, we, on some of them, we use valproic acid, for example. Valproic acid. Okay. Yes. The most usually here, the most usually, we use uh, uh, valproic acid. Um, okay. And some of them, some of them, because but something you need to know is about the um, the money. The money we use the uh, we can use midazolam, midazolam, but um, okay. but prolic acid is the most common we use. Most common we use. Okay. What about diphenylantin, sir? Diphenylantin, dilantin. What about dilantin, sir? Don't we use dilantin? Dilantin, no, no, diphenylantin. No. No, 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 no. Only, only, only we use the uh, acid, valproic acid and midazolam in some cases. But okay, more sir. usually, valproic acid. More usually here. Okay, sir. What about carbamazepine? Carbamazepine? Uh, well, well, but we use, uh, but more, more usually here, we use con spinal in surgery, in, in traumatic brain injury, like okay, not, sir. not, not, uh, to to take in home, yes, we use in, to take in home, yes, we use uh, calamazepine to take in home. After like for like uh, after the patient go out from hospital, yes, they can be taking calamazepine, but no in term hospitalary. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Not thank you so you. much. Okay, if you, thank if, you. if you have more thank questions, you, you can ask later, you, uh, Mansoor. We appreciate your input. Uh, we have thank a, you, thank you. We have a doctor from Afghanistan on the, on the panel, Ahmad uh, Fawad. Uh, I don't know if you can talk now, Ahmad, but uh, you're welcome to, to, to greet anybody. Uh, let's see here. Any more comments? Okay. Manuel's e email address is on the chat. If anybody wants to report a case or wants to talk to Manuel about questions you may have after the broadcast, his email's in the chat. So just grab that email if you want. Uh, let's see here. I've got some more messages. Oh, okay. Okay, F from Israel. Let me see if... Uh, from Israel Ramirez, he asks, "How long are you doing follow-ups in these in your patients?" Oh. Yes, Israel. How are you? Israel Ramirez. From Israel, Israel from Israel. <laughs> are you there, Israel? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, yeah. Get back and forth from me. Uh, John, do you know? I know Israel from university. Oh, from where? Where? From Dominican? Yes, yeah, yes, of... yes. Oh, bienvenido. Yes. He was one of my boss in the in the anat uh, of anatomy teacher. He was one of my boss when oh. I entered there. Oh, okay. Really? <laughs> well, welcome, yes. Israel. Thank you. I'm currently in Israel, so far away from the Dominican Republic, but. Thank you. Nice presentation, by the way. Manuel. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, yes, so your question is, uh, for how long time I am following the patient? Yes. Yeah. Well, for example, um, the second patient I present, uh, unfortunately that patient died. Uh, of the nine patients we have, two of them, they already died. And two of them, uh, we have a very close up to, to the patient because they are um, programming to make the cranioplasty. Two of them, cranioplasty. One of them, we put the bone flap, and yes, we we'll follow up this, this patient. Supposed to, um, supposed to, uh, two of the patients supposed to be there, to, supposed to go back to, to the hospital at least in, in, in September. The patient, uh, at least two months after the surgery, is supposed to go back. Uh, the, the, the next follow up. You have two patients. You have to, you sure. have two patients that, you have, you have, sorry. You have two patients and they underwent uh, the compressive and the robotic trochanoplasty. So, why in this case, why do you decide to do a, a systemography in, in this case? Why do you do it? The point sorry? of, of the, of, 
the, the point of the surgery you're describing is to release, no, to release the yes. CSF, to lower yes. the ICP, and to improve the the prognosis. Yes, this is the, it's the same that theoretically the decompressive does. So what's the difference? Why to do well, both? Well, for example, the difference is um, after the difference is in the systonostomy, you avoid the brain swelling. In the uh, the compressive craniectomy, you don't avoid the brain swelling. You just give enough space to the brain to relax. And the second part is in the systonostomy, after the brain swelling and the, after, after the brain relax, you can put the bone back. And that's one of the main issues also. Because if you put the bone back, in terms of uh, money for the for the patient on incoming country and, and not developing country is going to help a lot because the patient don't need to, and not only incoming country a, a, any kind of patient in any country if you avoid the patient the pay for another uh, for the cranioplasty or titanium one for example and go under surgery again all this stress there is Yes, the quality of the patient can be much better. I get it. I get it. So, okay, thanks. I hope to see uh, a series with more patients to decide. Yes, uh, yes the, the, the idea is to make more patients because with the nine, for example, the, the question Mansell say, yes, uh, they're a good question, but we, we have only nine patients and it's not enough universe to answer uh, um, properly all these questions. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah, we, you need a China connection to get the numbers. Yeah, they got the numbers. They got the numbers, all the numbers they have. Uh, well, they have a group in China doing cisternostomy, right? Uh, yes. Young, Young Hong, you've, have you connected with him, Young Hong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I meet him. I meet him in Pakistan. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, he, does he have a lot of cases uh, that he can look at? Yes, yes, yes. He, he has a lot of cases. But the idea, the idea for example, um, I, I don't include any of the patients I made there in, in India to, to avoid the bias, you know? So okay. uh, to avoid the bias, because I was with Professor Cherry, and to avoid the bias, I don't include the patient I, I make with him. I try to to include patient in here um, from different different hospitals. Oh, it's okay. gonna be good if we can make, for example, in Latin America. We unfortunately, it's a pity, but we have a lot of trauma cases. Uh, you know, in Latin America have. Um, a big problem with the motorcycle, people don't use the, the proper uh, equipment. So we have a lot of trauma and we can make a, a huge study about cystonostomy and see uh, and solve a lot of questions. For example, the question Dr. Manstor uh, uh, say, yes, we, we, can, we can solve this question with a good amount of patients okay. in different hospitals and in different countries. Okay, someone's asking for your email. Let me get it. Okay, Amir, I'll give it to you again. I'm putting, I'm putting uh, once again, Manuel's email on the chat. Okay, make sure you see it, Amir, right there. I just put it on the chat. Yes, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, okay. I cannot find uh, Mr. Manuel's email. Oh, did you get you got the email right? No, no. Can, can you can you see it in the chat? It's in the chat right there. Can anybody else see it in the chat? Manuel's email address. Can anybody else see it at all? Oh yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I sure. Okay, you got it. Make sure you get it before we close because it disappears <laughs> once we close. Okay. How, how are you dealing with the winters in Moscow, uh, Manuel? 
Well, the, it's getting cold again. It's, getting well, it's cold not. Again. It's not cold like that in Dominican. Of course, no, no, never, never, <laughs> never, never. <laughs> If there's no snow in Dominican, right? Never, no snow, no. ever. Never. No, it's, it's, you know, it's Caribbean. But you stay indoors all the time, right? You're in the, you're in the hospital all the time. So. Sorry? You're in the hospital all the time. Well, you know, if you want to learn, you need to work, 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 yeah, work. Yeah, that, yeah, so the life of a doctor it doesn't uh, matter if you're Dominican or Russia, you're inside. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I, I came very far from my, well, this is my home. <laughs> now this is my home. Uh, but, you know, I came from very far and not for sitting. Okay, very good, Manuel. Any, okay. So, yeah, um, <clears throat> if you want to arrange a, a webcast in Russian about sister anatomy, we could do that yes. if you want. Yes, we're going to do if, that. If your, um, part, if your partner wants to help you, Nikita wants to help, yeah. Yes, yes, it's going to be very good. And to Radames Ramirez Cano from, from Mexico, also I am planning to to make some uh, multi-center pilots and see if what, can, what we can do with sister anatomy and what results can be there. I hope all of you can join and we can, and my mail is there. We can talk about it and see what can happen. Also to all to the participants, um, we can make some pilot this is an me and see. Okay. Okay, any closing remarks for anybody? Want to say anything before we close? But uh, thank okay. You so much. Yeah, thank you for coming, Amir. Thank everyone for coming. I'm, thank you, gonna, Amir. We're going to stay you, here. Sir. I'm just going to stop recording, but please stay here to, to network. Thank you very much, everybody.